Hey there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and I'm here to give you the biggest book haul I've probably done on this channel. I have a lot of books to show you. Without further ado, let's get right down to the books because there's sure going to be a lot of them. Let's get the series out of the way. I don't usually buy series in bulk, but I made the best the best book purchase I have made all year when I bought The Raven Cycle in hardcover. Okay, so for those who might be watching this as their first video from my channel, I love The Raven Cycle with my whole heart and when these books showed up at my door, I just have to admit the fact that I think I do have a favorite series and I think my favorite series is The Raven Cycle. These books make me incredibly happy. I'm so happy I got these in hardback. I do own the series in paperback. Those are in a different country from where I am right now. And I don't know, it just makes me very, very happy. For anybody who's wondering if they should read The Raven Cycle, you definitely should. But the first book in the series is called The Raven Boys. It follows this group of boys who are on a quest to find a dead Welsh king because they've heard that if you find this king, he will grant you one wish. There is also this girl who exists and if she kisses her true love, he will die. Those two things exist in the same world. It is much more than that in terms of a series. It is everything to me. And these. These are beautiful. Okay, so I'll put them down because otherwise I'll just spend the whole video talking about how much I love that I hold these in. The other series that I hold in is the entire Tokyo Ghoul series. These are volumes 1 to volumes 14 and they are a manga series. This manga series is by Sue Ishida and this is the first volume of Tokyo Ghoul. I watched the anime earlier this year and I absolutely loved the anime. I was watching it while I was chatting to Dom from Dom Pies here about these. She was reading the manga and I was watching the anime and having our discussions and both of us fangirling over it together was absolutely fantastic. But I do have to say that one thing I discovered by doing that is that the anime cuts out so much of the manga scenes to the point where the anime doesn't always make complete sense in terms of plot and storyline, which I didn't mind because I was watching the anime first and foremost, so I managed to still love these characters and adore it, but it does mean that now I want to read the manga to see all of the content that I was missing and just to get the experience of reading the original source material. I haven't told you what it's about yet. Tokyo Ghoul is set in a Japan where these ghouls exist and ghouls eat humans. So it's kind of a ghouls versus human world. But there is this boy called Kaneki and he ends up needing emergency surgery and they kind of use ghoul parts for his surgery and he ends up being this half human half ghoul and he's trying to bring those two parts of his identity together but also try and stop the fighting between ghouls and humans if he possibly can. I just know the manga series is going to be amazing because I really love the anime series and it's going to just be more so I got the whole series second hand because manga can be quite pricey. I can't wait to read it. A book that I got is Law Olympus by Rachel Smith. This is volume one and this one is Persephone Hades Romance but set in contemporary society. The cover looks gorgeous. You see the blue to the pink. The whole colour palette for this graphic novel is like that. It looks gorgeous. It's exciting because it's Greek mythology but it's also a romance which are two things that I'm very very interested in and I'm really looking forward to reading this one. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I got Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. This one is Margaret Rogerson's third book. I have read the other two and really really enjoyed them so I was looking forward to getting to Vespertine. And the best way to describe Vespertine is it's set in a world where spirits exist and this young girl here is about to do a certain test that would get her to show her ability to understand and deal with these spirits. She doesn't want to pass the test because she wants to stay exactly where she is but when everything starts to go wrong and her home is threatened she might have to step up and showcase her abilities to save everyone. 
I have already started reading this one. I've only got 100 pages left. I'm having a blast with it. I'm finding it so much fun. I'm finding it so entertaining, but I'll definitely tell you more in a wrap up once I've completely finished. Margaret Rodishan can just do no wrong for me. Her books are always a good time. The next book I got is Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar, and I got this one in paperback from Waypoint Books, which I'll leave a link to down below. I definitely wanted to get this one in paperback because the sprayed edges are absolutely gorgeous. And I've already read this book. It's just one that I wanted to have on my shelves and have in my collection because I really, really enjoyed it. In Felix Ever After, we're following a teenage boy who is trans and somebody puts up an exhibition of photos of him pre-transition and then he also starts to get cyber stalked and cyber bullied. So he's trying to figure out who is texting him these messages and also who put up this exhibition. But at the same time, he's getting ready for university. He's going through this part of life where it seems like a grand ending and a new beginning is about to start. And it's about him dealing with his feelings and thoughts through all of those things while also dealing with the stalker. And I really, really enjoyed this. I really, really recommend it. I learned a lot from it, but I also enjoyed the reading process too, which I think is very important. It's a beautiful cover. It's a beautiful book on my shelves now. I did a lot of secondhand shopping, so there's some secondhand books in this haul. One of them was Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I basically don't know too much about this one because I want to go in not knowing too much, seeing as it's kind of a thriller, horror sort of book. Those are the best ones to go into without having many expectations. I've heard good things from this author, so I'm just looking forward to trying something by them for once. The Guest List by Lucy Foley, and I was interested in this one as soon as I saw it compared to And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, which is one of my favorite, my favorite Agatha Christie novels. And I've just heard it's kind of like that, so I'm, I'm intrigued, I guess. All of these people get sent to an island and it's an invitation to dinner, but people start dying. It's kind of got the same premise. I'm looking forward to reading it. Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. I've been reading more young adult contemporaries and really, really enjoying them. So I want to get back into picking up more of them again. And this one is inspired by Grease the Musical. It's a Grease retelling, but it's gay. So I decided I needed to read it because I do like that musical. It gives a very good synopsis on the cover where it says Ollie and Will were a summer fling, now they're classmates but only one of them is out. And I feel like that makes more sense than the actual Grease storyline but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have fun reading this one. Wranglestone by Darren Charlton and I've just been interested in more horror books after Gothtober because I realised that the kind of horror gothic thriller genre mix, cross genre. That's what I really, really enjoy. And I've been told that this one is queer zombies. So again, I just had to have it once I heard it was queer zombies because that sounds fantastic to me. Then I got sent some very exciting books. One of them is The Appeal by Janice Hallett. I heard Victoria from What Victoria Read talking about this book and how fun it was and also Emma from Drinking By My Shelf. And after that, I just wanted to give it a try for myself too. This one is a murder mystery where there's one murder and there's 15 suspects and it's typically like the murder mystery layout for a story where you gradually go through and you try and figure out who was the murderer. But in this one, it kind of presents all the evidence to you and it's a bit more interactive trying to get you to be the detective. And I quite like the sound of that. I like to predict who is the murderer. I like to be correct. So we'll see if I can guess it in this one. We have Detransition Baby by Tori Peters, which is just one that I've been interested in ever since I heard about it on social media and the fuss that was kicked up around this book. And in this one, we're following a couple and I believe one of them starts to detransition. So it's working through that, their emotions, their relationship, and also being at that stage in life where you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what decisions you're gonna be making and everything is supposedly impacting the future. So I'm just curious to see what it's going to be like for myself because I've just heard such a range of things about this book. I'm kind of flying through these, but I'm very happy that I am. The next one we have here is again a second hand buy and that's Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I've read Strange the Dreamer and I am reading Muse of Nightmares and I think it'll be interesting just to read her writing but in a different story. I wonder if I'd be able to enjoy the story even more than I am with the Strange the Dreamer 
duology, not that I'm disliking it, but I'm just curious to see her writing in a different series. And I have heard good things about this series on booktube, so I thought I would just pick it up and give it a go. Everything Within and In Between by Nikki Barthelmess, and this one just sounded very interesting because it hits quite a few of my themes that I enjoy reading about, the number one one being identity. Following this Mexican teenager who has been raised by her grandmother, her mother is out of the picture and she's always been told that she needs to be as American as possible, she's never been taught Spanish, she's not been able to access any of that side of her culture because of her grandmother and when one day she stumbles across a letter from her mother begging to see her, she is surprised to know that her mother was actually trying to reach out to her all this time and she goes and runs away to spend time with her mother and see if she can tap into some of that culture that she has been missing all of her life. But when she gets there, maybe things are not exactly as idealistic as she has painted them to be in her mind. And it just sounded like one of those contemporaries which was going to tick all of my boxes. Then we have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel and this one I picked up on a whim because it came with other secondhand books and I read The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel and that was actually my first book by her and I felt very very mixed about it. I didn't love it but I didn't hate it completely either. When I said should I bother trying Station Eleven, half of you said don't bother, half of you said it's my favourite book ever. So now that I got it second hand I feel like that's a bit of a compromise. I don't think it's one I'm going to get to very soon but it is one that I would like to give a chance to eventually. Lord of the Flies by William Golding. This is a book I read in secondary school quite a while ago and it's one that's just stuck with me. It's not one that I love completely but it's one that I refer to a lot. I really like its concept, I really like how it drives that concept and it's got quite a few things that I appreciate in books like an isolated setting, like characters that are trapped in that setting and therefore certain things go down. That's quite a lot of what one of my writing projects is like at the moment so I've been drawing on Lord of the Flies a lot for inspiration and I kind of want to just have it so that I can peruse through it while I'm writing if I need to and I actually always I'm looking for good solid retellings of this one. I have yet to find one that I like so I feel like it's a monumental book for me even though it's not a favourite book for me and I wanted a copy for my shelves. In Lord of the Flies we follow this group of classmates who end up in a plane crash and they are stranded on an island. They are kids but maybe these kids start doing some very dodgy stuff when they're left on an island alone to survive. Harrow Lake by Kat Ellis, another secondhand buy. The pages are very neon yellow, just like the cover. This is when I first saw Kasha from Kasha in Bookland talking about. She reads a lot of horror books and as I already said, I'm interested in picking up more horror, so I'm looking forward to when I get my hands to reading this one. Another one where I was very much influenced by a booktuber, we have A Skin Full of Shadows by Frances Harding, and this is one that I picked up because I know that Lynn from Lynn Hermione, I'll leave her blog down below, and also Cara from Wild Book Garden really, really enjoyed this author. Lynn hasn't necessarily read this particular book and I'm not sure if Kara has either but the author, they like the author so I just decided to pick it up when I saw it second hand with some other books that I wanted to give this author a try because often my thoughts align with Kara's so if she likes this author I uh, probably am gonna too. <laughs> New Animal by Ella Baxter and this one it just sounded very interesting again it hits one of my themes that I enjoy reading about so we're following this girl who it's very disconnected from her emotions nothing really phases her but then her mother dies and she tries to run away from her grief by running right into the BDSM scene and it's about her dealing with her grief going through the BDSM scene and her experiences with people and how her experiences with people kind of reflect on her finding her own identity and understanding herself better. That just sounds right up my alley for multiple reasons and it sounds weird and wonderful and I want to give it a go and see what I think of it. Before we go any further in this haul I'm going to invite past Olivia Savannah here to talk about some books I got a few months ago but hadn't got around to sharing with you guys quite yet. So the first stack of books I've got here are books from Lily L. Reads. She is moving and was unhauling some books so I 
pull them in from her own haul and there are some books I'm very excited to read here. So the first one is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I've heard a lot of good things about this author. I've also got Mexican Gothic so I'm looking forward to trying two of her very very popular works and seeing if I want to delve into more of her books. The cover is also so bright and vibrant. I absolutely adore it. The next book that I hauled in from her is Ray Bearer by Jordan Afiko and I have just heard again such fantastic things about this book and I'm really looking forward to trying it for myself and I absolutely love this cover. It took me forever to see that there is a face in the cover but once you see it you can't unsee it and I just think it's beautiful and colourful and I hope the book is just going to be as wonderful on the inside as it is on the outside. Then I also hauled in The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin and this one is the first book in a different series that is not the fifth season series by N.K. Jemisin and I read the fifth season and I absolutely loved it and it's just from one book. I already know that I just want to read my way through her entire backlist so even though I'm not done with the fifth season, the Broken Earth trilogy I should say, I'm going to first finish that one and then get to this one but because she was unhauling it I just had to pick it up while I still could. Then I also got Freshwater by Akwaiki Amezi. I read Pet early this year and it's one of the best books I've read this year. So I'm looking forward to getting more of this author's works into my brain. And this one is their literary adult fiction. I believe this was their debut and I've just heard fantastic things. It actually doesn't sound quite up my alley because I'm not that interested in stories that lend into the abstract. But I won't know if this one it does it too much or if I'll just be as swept away by Freshwater as I was by Pet until I I give it a go so I'm looking forward to doing so. Unkindness of Ghost by Rivers Solomon and I really really enjoyed The Deep by Rivers Solomon. I've also got Sorrowland and now I've also got this one to read too. I know that my sister read this one and also really enjoyed it and found a lot of valuable things in this book so I'm looking forward to giving it a go for myself. Sleeping Giants by Sylvian Novel and this one is one I've had on my Kindle for a very very long time until I just realized this is not my favourite genre to read on my Kindle and seeing as Lily was unhauling it I just thought I would get a physical copy and now I'm much more likely to read it. I've actually been very interested in this trilogy for a very long time, it's science fiction, but I just haven't been picking it up on my Kindle and I think having a physical copy will make me more likely to pick it up sooner. Another one I got that I'm very excited about is Lanny by Max Porter. I've been very interested in Max Porter's works even though I haven't read any. I've just been hearing good things about them and they sound like they're going to be something for me. The one that I was most interested in is Grief is a Thing with Feathers but seeing as Lily was unhauling this one I thought why not start with Lanny and give it a go first and it's also his longest work. I think he has two other works that are shorter but yes looking forward to finally trying something by Max Porter instead of hearing everyone's opinions on Max Porter but not having a book to try myself. The next book that I got is Fingersmith by Sarah Waters and this is a book I've heard again so many brilliant things about. I've it's not a perfect book, even Sarah Waters thinks there are things that she would do differently today, but it is a classic in its genre and I'm very much looking forward to reading it. I also heard Scott and Nell's opinion from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot and that definitely influenced me to pick it up when I saw it in Lily's Unhaul pile. Educated by Tara Westover and this is one I've just wanted to read for a very very long time. I was kind of waiting till I could get a hardcover copy. I think the hardcover copy is the one where there's a pencil on the cover and I really like that cover but I've just decided to get the paperback and go for it because I do really want to read this book. And this one is a memoir about her experiences because Tara grew up off the radar to according to the government she didn't exist and she was preparing for the end of days with her family that's the way that she grew up but then she kind of enters into life as we know it and it's about her disillusionment getting adjusted to that and education getting an education so that is what this memoir is about and I think it's going to be very very interesting. Last but not least from her on haul I got Lilani of the Distant Sea by Erin Entrada Kelly and this one is a middle grade book that just sounded absolutely fantastic. I remember hearing about it on from the channel That's So Po and her review of it absolutely convinced me that I wanted to read it and it was on my TBR and I saw it in the unhaul pass so I thought time to get that middle grade book so that is what I did and those are all the books that I got from Lily L. Reads.
The next two books are also from Unhauls. Reading it through Infinity was unhauling some proofs and just sending them out to people who can't really sell them. So she sent me two that I was interested in and actually both of these are on my TBR list so it was just a bit of a win-win to be able to get them. So the first one is Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett and this one is about a teenager who has HIV and she's starting over at a new school. She falls for someone but of course she needs to disclose that she has HIV but also she's been trying to keep it a secret at the school. So it's about that and I haven't read a book about a teenager living with HIV before so I found that an incredibly interesting aspect but also Victoria from what Victoria read and Charlotte from Books and Bargains did a buddy read of this book and they both really really loved it and their reviews made me want to pick this one up for myself. Here the whole time by Vitor Martins and this one is a translated young adult novel. It's a uh, gay romance it's supposed to be body positive as well and I've just heard some good reviews of it and it just was translated young adult and I feel like if I do read translated fiction it's mostly adult fiction so I wanted to give one a go and see what it's like and I hope it's just going to be a very cute romance as most of the reviews seem to promise me. White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson and this one is uh, pitched as Get Out meets The Haunting of Hill House. I love Get Out, it's one of my favourite horror films the Haunting of Hill House is my favourite TV show series and also one of my favourite horror TV series I guess and just that pitch combination absolutely sold me on this novel and I cannot wait to read it. I've heard good things about Tiffany D. Jackson's writing as well and the cover is absolutely gorgeous. The House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. Booktube adores this book and I cannot wait to see all of the reasons why they adore it. It's about these children who are very dangerous and they live at this orphanage and someone is sent there to decide whether these children should live or die and it's got these found family feels apparently, magical vibes, but like quiet magical vibes and a very peaceful, adorable story that I'm looking forward to digging my teeth into. Poetry, plays and memoirs, I have been adoring reading those at the moment, so I have one of each to show you. The first one is a poetry collection called All the Names Given by Raymond Antrobus, and this one it sounds like it really looks at identity. It's got some poems that play around with his name as well. But on the back here it says an investigation into language, miscommunication, place and memory. I have not been let down by a poetry collection from the Picador Poetry selection that they have and so I'm very excited to read this one. Paradise by K. Tempest. This one is Philocites, Philocites, I don't know how you say that story but retold. Apparently this does a very good job of lending an old tale that is very familiar, some contemporary themes and I'm looking forward to seeing that in a play. I had read all of the plays that I owned but I really enjoy reading plays so I was getting some more and you'll see some more coming up in this haul. Crying in H. Mart by Michelle Zorna which which is a memoir that I have heard absolutely fantastic things about and I cannot wait to read it. It definitely digs into culture and identity but it's also looking at food, family and grief and I've heard it's just fantastic so I can't wait to read this for myself. I'm, I'm really excited about this one. Three Plays for Puritans by Bernard Shaw which includes The Devil's Disciple, Season Cleopatra and Captain Brosbound's Conversion. And I read Pygmalion by Bernard Shaw earlier this year. Really, really enjoyed it. Thought it was very, very well written and want to read more by him. So I've got three plays in all in one collection. I've also really been enjoying these like Penguin Classics really, really old books because I got Pygmalion in that edition and I don't know, they just seem quite collectory and old. The pages are all yellowed. I don't think they sell them anymore. So I... I quite like connecting these, which is the reason why I picked up this one too. I also picked up Little Murders by Jules Pfeiffer. I absolutely know nothing about this play. I didn't even read the synopsis. I just saw that it matched and that it was a play and then I got it. But the next two are going to look a bit weird because they're in plastic bags and I'm not going to take them out of the plastic bags for this video. They're in plastic bags because they've got some spotting on their pages and I'm just putting them in plastic bags to see if it is just, you know, spotting that happens in old ages pages or if it's mold and if it's mold I'm gonna have to read them and then get rid of them but if it isn't I do get to keep them but I will keep them in plastic bags so that I don't know if it is mold it doesn't infect or affect any of my other books because all my books are together in the same place. Plays by Bernard Shaw and this is Arms and the Man, Candida, 
the Man of Destiny, and You Can Never Tell. So it's four more Bernard plays. I already described the reason why I want to read Bernard plays. And then, well, the Tesco's writing is on the front of this one, but we also have Arcadia by Tom Stoppard, and Tom Stoppard is the playwright who wrote Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are not dead. I think that's another one I read early this year. Absolutely loved it and adored it. It had something to do with Hamlet, so it was kind of obvious that I was going to enjoy it, but it was a very good play in and of its own right, and therefore I want to read more by Tom Stoppard, and that's why I picked this play up. Hello and welcome back to the present day. We are now going to finish up this haul. We're talking about the last few books. So I got some books as a very early Christmas present, but also congratulations on the new job present from Cara. She brought them all in one go, so I'm gonna share them with you here. Thank you so much, Cara. That was really, really nice of you to do that. The first one is The Boy in the Black Suit by Jason Reynolds. He also wrote Long Way Down, which I really, really enjoyed. And this one is a contemporary that follows a teenager who who is working at a funeral home while also going through his own grief process and grief is just again one of my buzz themes I guess and she thinks I'm really gonna like this one I believe she's probably correct and so I'm very very much looking forward to reading this Artemis Fowl the graphic novel by Owen Colfer, adapted by Michael Morsi and illustrated by Stephen Gilpin. And Artemis Fowl is a series that I absolutely adore and love. It's one of my favourite middle grade series and it was recommended to me by Cara. She kind of spurred me on to reading it. And then there used to be a graphic novel, but she said it wasn't so good, so I wasn't interested. But they've made a new graphic novel, and I'm very excited to read it. She really enjoyed it, and I hope that I will enjoy it just as much. I really like graphic novels. I really like Artemis Fowl. So hopefully I will just really enjoy this. And then last but not least, she got me a copy of Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw. This is a play that I read earlier this year and really, really enjoyed. And then a few months ago, I saw that HarperCollins was releasing this beautiful edition of it. I don't think there's been such a nice edition of Pygmalion to buy anywhere. It's got a woman with a teacup in her hand. You know how we feel about tea on this channel. We love tea. This is basically one of my profiles. So I was very happy to see this stunning edition and I really wanted it. So thank you again, Cara. In this one, we follow these men who decide that they have the teaching and the skill to bring a lower class woman up into upper class and raise her right and change her speaking and it's about them doing so and what it amounts to. It's very good. Carefree Black Girls by Zeba Blay and this one is an essay collection with essays about blackness, black culture, black identity and these essays go from things like not feeling like you fit in to speaking a different way when talking to certain people but also covering things like Nicki Minaj and other more contemporary topics. So it sounds like it's going to be a very good essay collection and I've just seen very positive reviews for it across the board as well. This stunning edition of Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston which is a classic I absolutely adore. I've got an edition of this already but as soon as I saw this edition I just really wanted to have it because it's so beautiful and yeah as soon as I saw it in the shop I really wanted to have my own edition so I have it I'm not even going to tell you what this book is about just watch a few of my past videos because I've talked about it so much on this channel one of my favorites Woman Eat Me Whole by Ama Asantuea Dayaka and I am so excited to read this poetry collection I'm someone who is a softie for a very good title and as soon as I read the title Women Eat Me Whole I was interested in this poetry collection. It doesn't come out until March 2022 so I put it on my Instagram story like I'm looking forward to reading this one and that same night the poet emailed me like would you like a review copy and I don't know how that happened, how the universe came together but I'm so happy and I'm trying to hold off reading this one until March but I don't think I'm gonna last. A book that I got from work and that is Lear Wife by J.R. Thorpe and I'm very excited about this one because it's inspired by Shakespeare. So in this one we are following Queen Lear who is Lear's wife from the play King Lear. So the events of King Lear have happened. If you've read the play you know it's one of his tragedies so certain things have happened. Lear's wife was not part of the play at all, she's an iconic figure that was written out of the play and she returns to where the play takes place 
and she's dealing with the remains of everything that's left behind and dealing with the aftermath all by herself while also grappling with an intense feeling of grief that she's experiencing and that play is about this and that fascinates me because she is such a key figure to the family that just was not present for the whole thing. I never spared a second thought to her but as soon as I heard the synopsis of this one I just knew I wanted to learn about her and learn her story. Another one that I've already started reading and that is The Transgender Issue by Sean Fay and this one is an argument for justice for transgender rights and I picked it up as a buddy read with my sister because me and my sister had a lot of debates and discussions about trans topics when we were talking about two authors in particular, Ngozi and Rowling, and it's not like we had opposite opinions exactly, we were both on the same side, but there were certain things that I believed and she believed and they weren't intersecting. She was like, I want to learn more about trans rights. Can you think of a book that you can recommend to me so I can learn more about this? And I thought, that is fantastic. I love that initiative. To encourage her, I said, let's do a buddy read because that means we can have discussions and talk about things. So we're buddy reading this one together and I'm learning a lot and she's learning a lot and it's fantastic. And I really, really recommend lots of people read it because even though I've only read the beginning, I've learned so much and I think so many other people could learn a lot from this book. We are in the home stretch. We are in the home stretch. So the next two books that I got are The Three Musketeers and The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandra Dumas. And these are both Russian classics that are chunky and I'm looking forward to reading. I mostly got them because I needed to add some books on to make free shipping. This is one that I'm planning to buddy read with Abby of Abby of Pevenor. Next year we slow buddy read War and Peace and it was fantastic so I'm looking forward to slow buddy reading another Russian classic that I really wanted to read. And then The Three Musketeers I'm reading for a secret project which has nothing to do with booktube but has entirely something to do with my personal life and I guess I'll tell you about it in the wrap up because I can't tell you about it now. Then we have some other books. We have The Night Will Be Long by Santiago Gamboa and this is translated fiction. I'm interested in this one because it focuses on a dark thriller that is set in Latin America which focuses on the corruption of the churches there which is something that I've had lots of discussions with one of my friends about and I'm very interested to just read a thriller that's set and focuses on that in particular. Then we have Mona which is one that I picked up at an event that I was at for work and this one is about this young adult who goes to university and she realises that diversity is something that they really want to know about and seeing as she is already diverse because she's Latin American she wonders why it'd be so bad for her to embellish it a little bit and add the fact that she's indigenous and other little tidbits to her identity that are not necessarily true and it discusses her coming of age but also coming to the realisation that maybe what she did is not the best thing. I don't usually talk about cookbooks on here but seeing as this is a review copy I thought I would mention it and that is Cook As You Are by Ruby Tando. This is a cookbook that is about cooking as you are. This, these are recipes that are good for people who don't want to buy a lot of ingredients. These are recipes for people who just need something quick on the table in front of them that is healthy and balanced. And it's all about just cooking what you can. What I especially love is that this one really caters to everyone. There are recipes but there are also substitutes to every recipe so if it's saying a certain type of lentils she might say that you can have this simpler type of lentils or if it's a meat recipe she might give you ideas on how you can turn it vegetarian or vegan and as well as that there's also recipes that avoid cutting and other mobility required maybe disabled people who are cooking so i just feel like this is a very accessible cookbook i've already made some recipes from this i've made the beetroot and bean chili and this is what it looks like very quick and easy and it was delicious i also made an asparagus and chili pasta Again, absolutely delicious. I love asparagus and also can you tell I like chili? I recommend this one. It's really nice. I also like that it doesn't have pictures of the recipes but it has illustrations because then you don't have an expectation in your mind of what you think the meal should look like. So whatever you make passes your standards test. Maybe that's only an issue I have. We're on to the last book. The last book here is Midnight Moon by Janine Montagu. And this one is a historical fiction romance. It's quite old. It looks 
like it's gonna be entertaining who knows if it's aged well i haven't read it before but hannah from ledette and has read it before and after our buddy read where we both didn't like the book we decided that we could reread this book on her end and also read this one on my end because we both like romance and i'm looking to read more historical romance so she just said let's let's read this one it'll be a laugh and hopefully it will be a very good laugh so there you have it. Those are a lot of books that I have recently added to my shelves. I've finally filmed this haul and got it out to you. It's been waiting for quite a while. Please let me know in the comment section down below if you've read any of these books. Is there one that I should really start with? And let me know the latest book that you've bought, received, borrowed or acquired in the comment section down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't you forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video and you know what they say. Onwards and upwards. Excelsior. Okay, this is going to be hard to carry. This one is Rivers Solomon's book. I don't know if it's debut. I don't, I don't know.